Hi, this is Sandra. I'm here again with another recipe for you, and this recipe is my fried flounder. A lot of people in the South like catfish, and catfish is one of the staples of Mississippi. They got farm-raised catfish, and people buy it all over the United States. And I don't eat catfish anymore. My religious belief is not eating fish that has no scales or no gills. So I came up with a recipe uh, of fish. There's so many fish that you can buy that have scales and fins and um, you can eat. But I come across flounder. Flounder is a nice good fish. So I'm going to show you how to fry flounder. Sometimes you find flounder is a, in the grocery store and it's a little thin like that. It's sort of thin. So what I do, I put two together. I put two together like that. And that gives it a thickness. I'm going to show you how to do that. But first of all, what we're going to do is uh, black pepper. Now I'm just going to use a basic, basic season, just black pepper and salt. Just, you know, that's what we use when we use to cut fish. We used to just put black pepper and salt on it and, and cornmeal and fry them. So I'm just going to salt it up with some black pepper. And then I'm going to put some salt. Just like this. Make sure everything is salted up. And this flour is really thin and it's really good. So that's why I put two together. Now what I do next is get cornmeal. I get yellow cornmeal. You can see that yellow cornmeal. Mark the white yellow cornmeal. And I just do just like this all over got wet a little bit and then I add some cayenne pepper I like cayenne pepper on my fish and most well this is peppercino my goodness you know what I got me some peppercino on my fish today so we're gonna put some cayenne pepper cayenne pepper is good so peppercino is fine too so we gonna put a little cayenne pepper on the cornmeal and then just a little more salt and just a touch a little bit more pepper so we're going to just kind of get this together like this show you how to do it so you can know how to do this okay we got our oil on so what we're going to do is match these up which one it matches real good and match it like that now I usually don't put any too much meal in between there. Just a little touch, not too much. I'm gonna clean some of this off. Because I don't usually put meal in between there. Not that much anyway. So we're gonna put those two together. They match up pretty good. Like that. And then we're gonna match the other one up. Now you can fry them thin like this if you like thin, but I like mine kind of thick. This is the way we're supposed to do this, just like that. Okay, we're going to put some more cornmeal on there. Now this is wet. We left some of the water in there so it can have a lot of concentration on the fish so the cornmeal can stay there and pat it a little bit like that. And then we're going to lay, let's see, that looks slippery, but it's going to work, y'all. What we're going to do is lay it in here just like this, like that. I'm going to lay the other one like that too. Just like that. Make sure it's coated all over. And see the flour? You put flour if you want to put flour, but I'm just doing yellow cornmeal. Just regular yellow cornmeal. Let get that together. I'm going to lay that in there like that. And we're gonna let that fry for a minute. Yes, I remember we used to fish for my uncle. My uncle Raymond, bless his heart. We we'll get up five o'clock in the morning, thought we was gonna go fishing with him. Ooh, Lord, we did, but we didn't like it too much. So we stayed at five o'clock in the morning, maybe 4.30, on that fish pond, sitting there eating some sandwiches, like bologna sandwiches. We'll sit there and eat the bologna sandwiches and catch about maybe two or three fish. <laughs> and my mom would say, y'all was out there all day and that's all you caught, two or three fish. But we had fun though. We had a lot of fun with my uncle. That was our favorite uncle. 
So what we're going to do now is see what this is going to do. Now we're letting the fish fry very gentle. I'm going to use this paper towel to put the fish in. We let it fry real gentle. See how that sticks together? And that cornmeal is going to uh, combine once it's um, cooking. But I usually don't put cornmeal on the middle when I stick them together. So what you do next, when you get ready to do this again, if you decide to do this, just season your uh, fish with the black pepper and salt and cayenne pepper if you want. And then just do the top of the fish with the coating. And I think that would be just fine if you do it like that. Uh, so let's see what this is ready to turn over. Not quite yet. But just fry it like this. And then the fly to have a good taste, a good flaky taste. And you really won't miss the catfish taste. Because it has a sensitivity and the uh, texture of catfish. But you know, people like that taste of catfish, which is fine. But just try the flounder. If you don't eat catfish, or uh, fish with uh, fins, without fins and without gills, try the flounder. Because you got flounder, you got red snapper, you got orange roughy, you got uh, perch, you have uh, uh, salmon. You can do any fish that you like without having to eat catfish. Okay, now it's getting kind of brown. Now, this is pan fry. Now, I'm pretty sure you can deep fry this if you want, but I don't really deep fry too much unless it's fried chicken or some good old hush puppies. I'm going to do a hush puppy recipe for you one day, and I love the way this hush puppy recipe turns out. Okay, I believe it's time to turn this fish over. Just a little bit more, just a little bit more. And this fish is so good with homemade tartar sauce. Now I have a recipe for homemade tartar sauce. So what I'm going to do one day is do a homemade tartar sauce and a homemade hush puppies with some fish with maybe some uh, red snapper. I have a red snapper dinner for you one day. Okay, let's see what this fish looks like underneath here. Well, it looks like it's not brown to me enough. I like my fish to be golden brown. And I'm pretty sure, oh, this smells so good. Now, if you're missing uh, flounder by with the sauce and everything, go ahead and do that. And if you never tried frying it, try to fry it and see what it comes out to be. Because it comes out to be really, really good. So, let's see. And this is about ready to turn over. Yes, it is. See that? Ready to turn over. I got two pieces together because I like a thick fish. There you go. Let me look at that. And you do the same on the other side and let it brown. And when it browns, then you take it out and you have your fried flounder. This is Sandra. I want to tell you happy eating. And try doing this flounder, uh, fried flounder, and I'm pretty sure you'll like it. Uh, you can get this recipe of a soulfoodqueen.net. And you can get this recipe of a soulfoodqueen.youtube. Uh, the reason why I have a uh, Soul Food Queen is because when I set the account up, with YouTube a long time ago, I never did change it because I was trying to promote my uh, website and I did not know that they were going to put my soul food queen down there as my name. So my name is Sandra and I want to tell you happy eating. And look, we're getting this thing really good. Look, it's smelling real good and I think you're going to really enjoy this fried flounder. This is Sandra. I want to say happy eating.